A Locked Room Mystery My Sitzfleisch got another workout that night, sitting through another boring state dinner. Part of my father's job was to go to meetings with important government officials, but another part of his job was to invite Nazis to the embassy for fancy meals, the embassy where a Jewish RAF spy was hiding in the next room. It was all I could think about while the Nazis around me talked about factories and battles and the Edelweiss pirates. Simon folded up in that tiny little closet. Had he, had he gotten out again since the air raid that morning? Had he had anything to eat? Had a chance to go to the bathroom? Suddenly, I realized everyone was looking at me expectantly. I must have been asked a question. I'm sorry, I'm not feeling well, I said. May I please be excused? My mother gave me a look from the other end of the table. I knew what that look meant. The best way to keep Simon hidden and safe was to pretend that nothing was different, to smile and laugh and be the good little Hitler youth at the dinner table. But she took pity on me with a sigh. Take your plate with you, she told me, in case you're hungry later. Take a plate for Simon, she meant. She knew exactly where I was going. I collected my plate and my drink, nodded my apologies to the Nazis at the table, and went for the hall. His German is so good, I heard a woman say as I left. If I didn't know you were Irish. I did the German look, saw no one was watching, and slipped into my father's study. I put the food on his desk, locked the door, and went to the corner with the secret room. Simon, I whispered. It's Michael. I found the hidden latch that opened the bookcase and pulled on it. The bookshelf swung open, and Simon pulled himself to his feet, unfolding his lanky arms and legs like a map. "'Boy, am I glad to see you,' he said. "'I have to see a man about a horse.' He hightailed it to the private bathroom off my father's study, and I waited while he relieved himself. "'We have to be quiet,' I warned him when he came out. Ma and Da are hosting a, a dinner party. The dining room's crawling with Nazis.' Foxes in the hen house, eh? he said, falling on the food I brought him. There's no potatoes, he said, around a bite, joking again about the Irish and their love of potatoes. Didn't you hear, I said, there was a potato famine a hundred years ago. The truth was, even though we were in an embassy and could afford the best of what was available, the war made, the war made food as scarce here in Germany as it was back in the British Isles, and we both knew it. Did you get inside his house? Simon asked between hungry bites of bread. He meant Fritz, of course, the jet fighter plans. I shook my head, but I think I'm getting closer. We trained after school. After we did some exercises, I taught him how to fight. Fighting, the other Irish pastime, Simon said, after drinking, of course. We wouldn't have gotten so good at either one without the English as neighbors, I told him. Simon lifted his cup of tea to me in salute. He enjoyed our verbal sparring as much as I did. I smiled. The other Catholic families we had known in Dublin were big, lots of sons and daughters, and in my daydreams I had an older brother who would joke with me, wrestle with me, stay up late with me discussing deep thoughts, defend me when the bullies ganged up on me in the schoolyard. For a moment I imagined Simon like part of our family, saw a future, long after the war, where we were great friends who got together in London pubs to talk about our jobs, our families, what books we were reading. I finished the golden spiders, I told him. Simon swallowed down a too big bite of bread. Already? Not too painful then, I take it. It was great, I said. And it really had been. It was about a boy in New York who sees a woman in a car call for help a woman wearing earrings that look like golden spiders, and he goes to the famous detective Nero Wolf and his assistant Archie Goodwin for help. I like Archie a lot, I said. Wolf's smart, but he's a jerk. Simon laughed. Yes, he is. What was your favorite part? We talked about the book for a few more minutes while Simon inhaled what was left of the food and drink. I think next, he said, going back inside the little closet with all the forbidden books, we'll try something by Agatha Christie. He scanned the shelves looking for the book he wanted. A locked room mystery. 
He smiled and gestured at his tiny apartment. Seems appropriate. Or no, wait. Here, the Maltese Falcon. You'll love this one. Suddenly, the doorknob to Da's study turned. The door cracked open. I flung the secret bookshelf door closed on Simon and threw myself backward against it to make sure it was closed as someone knocked and stuck his head inside the door.